The children of Israel in Egypt, they started multiplying, getting married, and the children of Israel, they only married from themselves because they were monotheistic, the Tawheed. And the Egyptians, they were associated, they had the shirk. Throughout their life, the children of Israel in Egypt, they saw the big revolution on how the Pharaoh, the Pharaonic dynasty, took over the Hyksos. And suddenly the Pharaoh became the king of Egypt. And the life became hard on the children of Israel, just like us here in England. The labor, we feel kind of like it's okay, they are mellow, they are okay on us. The conservatives, they come with boots and hammer and they hammer us. They are like the Pharaoh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you saw again, the faith of the children of Israel was going to change one more time due to a vision. Fir'aun saw in his dream that one child of the children of Israel was going to remove him from his kingdom. Fir'aun very scared. He wanted to fight. He was advised to slaughter every male that is to be born. And Pharaoh took it upon himself that that's it, I am going to slaughter. And he started slaughtering year after year after year. The elders of children of Israel, of the Jews, went to Pharaoh and they told him, if you keep doing like that, you are going to annihilate us. We won't have any children. We will have girls and that's it. We don't have males and we're not going to have, you're going to kill us all. Business people want to complain to Pharaoh, if you do all that, we're not going to have any labor anymore. So he says, what you suggest? They said, okay, you slaughter one year, and you leave the other year. And the children of Israel were redeemed a little bit. Give one life a year, take it the next year. The year that was safe, Harun salam, was born. So there was no need to hide Harun. He was safe to live and die one day. But Musa salam, the boy that was going to change history, was born in the year that the slaughter was on. But when Allah wants something, it happens. When Allah wants to decrease something, it happens. When Allah wants something to take place, even if the whole earth stopped it or tried to stop it, Allah's will will take place. Not only that, Musa salam, was born. Pharaoh had the special spies. Anyone that is born, he knew who it was, and the next day the people would turn to your home with a knife and they would lay the baby right in front of him and kill it. The mother of Musa salam, knew that her child is going to be killed. So Allah threw in her heart, and how many times Allah throws in your heart, but you are just heedless to the call of Allah in your heart. He put in, his, in her heart, don't fight it, don't be scared. Just put the child in a small little basket and put him and trust him to the river, water. And as you know, water is the source of life. Allah tells her, put him in a basket, put him on the Nile, and let me take care of the rest. It was a feeling. No jibri, no revelation came to her. It was something, as we say here, gut feeling. The mother does that and puts Musa salam, in the basket. And, he, and she trusts it to end the Nile. But obviously she sent his, her daughter and she goes, go and keep an eye on the basket. You never know, maybe the basket's going to turn and the baby's going to drown or some kind of animal's going to eat it. The daughter comes out and keeps an eye on the basket. Subhanallah. And Allah took care of Musa from that moment there. And Allah guided the basket. And you know where it landed? in the garden, in the harbor, to the castle of Fir'aun, the man who was there to kill Musa, Allah brought Musa to him. You want to kill him? I bring you Musa, but you can't kill him because Allah doesn't want you to kill it. Subhanallah. Not to go into details, Musa salam find itself in the castle. Fir'aun saw the boy Asya, the wife of Pharaoh, said to him, accept him, let us take him as his child. Pharaoh, my dear brothers and my sisters, was a man who could not make babies. He had one daughter, and then after that, Allah wa ta'ala cut off his progeny. He couldn't make babies, he couldn't have babies. So having a son, it was a great deal to his wife. Question, 
when Allah cut the offspring of Fir'aun by not letting him have baby boys, was Allah preparing the mother to fall in love with a little child boy? Yes, that is the twist of destiny of what we call when Allah does things ahead of time. And we only can connect the dots after the events took place. Musa السلام, grows and Fir'aun very fearsome. One day Fir'aun got in use to Musa because Allah gave this great gift. Allah made any eyes that saw Musa to fall in love with him. Even Fir'aun, as soon as he saw Musa, he fell in love with Musa. And even of these religious people, the priests and his ministers and everybody was warning Fir'aun. You're looking at the children of Israel, a boy, and it could be him. But Fir'aun was trapped. He fell in love with Musa. That was the command of Allah. One day, Fir'aun had Musa on his lap. And Musa reached the beard of Fir'aun and pulled it down. And Fir'aun became extremely paranoid. And he knew this was the boy that he saw in his dreams. And he commanded and he called for his slaughters. When as he heard this, as in Tafsir ibn Kathir, when Fir'aun calls the people to come and kill Musa, Asya came running and she guessed why. He goes, I want to kill him. She guessed he doesn't know what he's doing. He goes, no, he pulled my beard. This is the boy. She goes, no, he doesn't make any difference. Look, give him a date or a call and see which one he's going to pick. Fir'aun took her to that. And they brought a date and a call and they presented them to Musa And Musa being a child, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let Qadarullah take its course. Musa reached for the call and Fir'aun held the Musa's hand and stopped him from picking up the call. It was Allah's destiny. Musa salam grows and then you know the killing of the man and then going to Madian, getting married and coming back and then he receives the message from Allah. Musa salam came back to Egypt. The job of Musa was clear. Take the children of Israel back home. Take them back home to Palestine. One day my brothers and my sisters, the knives of the Fir'aun in the West will turn against us. When we Muslims become a great number, 30 years ago, we Muslims were a million and a half. Today, we are about 4 million. At one point, when you become 10 million, 20 million in England, people here in England will start realizing that we Muslims have become a danger. The mayor of London today is a born Muslim. The president of the United States, Barack Obama, hey, is a born Muslim. And maybe one day, the prime minister of England will be a Muslim. The danger of us Muslims becoming a, an authority, a power here, will send chills in the spine of those Fir'aun-like. And one day our children will be slaughtered. And one day we will be just like the children of Israel, wanting a savior. Where is our Musa? That day we'll appreciate Ashura. We'll appreciate why Allah kept that event fresh in our hearts every single year so that we never forget that we live in in a pharaonic type of families and societies we are prompt one day to the knife just like they have been and we muslims if we don't do what we should do by integrating and giving da'wah and presenting islam as it ought to be if we muslims stay like the children of israel did in egypt they lived for hundreds of years but they didn't give da'wah. The Egyptians were still worshiping idols and they were things, they were too separate. They were an entity into another country. They were always foreigners. So when Fir'aun wanted to kill them and torture them, it was too easy for him to do that. Where is our savior? One day we will ask. Musa salam, was sent to take the children of Israel away from the boots and the whips and the shackles of Fir'aun. Fir'aun didn't want to let that go, just like in this country here. They hate Muslims, but they can't kick, the, uh, kick us out. They hate Muslims wherever. We are terrorists, but our wealth, our investment are here. 
I hear this man from Qatar is investing 120 billion buying properties. England couldn't live without that kind of investment. The United Arab Emirates are buying everything here in England. I heard once a study and I read once a study that England was officially bankrupt. But who is holding it? The monies of the Muslims. And the danger, that money could be frozen any time. We Muslims are in a losing game. Musa was to take the children of Israel away from Pharaoh, from the oppression. Pharaoh wouldn't want to let that go. Then, when you read in the Quran, you find that Musa السلام, had different arguments and discussions and confrontations and challenges against Pharaoh. You know how long it took that? 40 years from the time Musa السلام, had the first talk with Pharaoh until Musa decided, to, uh, under the command of Allah, to take the children of Israel out of Egypt, 40 years went. It was not a week or two or 10 days or 20 days or six months. 40 years. When Allah Taala had given enough opportunities to Fir'aun and he kept playing, I am not going to go into details here because the talk here is about Ashura, remember? And how we can link it to our future now. The story of Musa, I'll do it one day and I'll go into details, but 40 years gone. One day, Allah sends to Musa a message. Get your people ready. You are leaving Egypt at the beginning of Muharram. Musa alayhi salam at that time didn't have 10 people. It's 650,000 with kids, children, animals, wealth, properties. How are they going to leave Egypt without letting the Egyptians know? That was a big job for Musa alayhi salam. It took a lot of planning. It was not an easy task. It was not an easy job. At the beginning of Muharram, they agreed on a particular day. The children of Israel did something horrible. And Allah punished them, with, punished them for it later on. Before leaving at the beginning of Muharram, they went to the Egyptians. And the women went to the f women's of Egyptians and borrowed from them gold. And they said, tomorrow we have a party. We're going to have a big celebration. If I could borrow some of your gold. And that gold was to leave Egypt, never to return. The children of Israel had decided to rape the children of Pharaoh. Early morning, the children of Israel left. When Pharaoh woke up on that very particular day, 650,000 people had vanished. A miracle in its own rights. Subhanallah. Instead of taking the army, what he got, and chased these 650,000 people, Pharaoh decided to call on all Egypt to gather the biggest army, i.e. the whole entire army of Egypt was summoned to Cairo, or to wherever he was, Aswan, or purpose, chasing the children of Israel. Pharaoh wanted to kill every single Jew. He gathered the biggest army, they say. If an enemy wanted to take Egypt, they could have done it on that day. There was not a single army person out there. All of them summoned to Pharaoh. And you can see Egypt as big as it is today with the dynasty and a power like that. They chased the children of Israel. But the decree of Allah was to take place according to how Allah wants it. Sometimes when you are trying your very best to avoid your destiny, you take the path where you will meet face to face with your destiny no running away from it Pharaoh, with his army a huge army chased the children of Israel on the 10th day of Muharram on the early mornings of the day of Muharram the two armies saw each other the children of Israel and the Pharaoh army it was Ashura that was the time when Allah brought the two great number of people in man's history at that time subhanallah before crossing the sea, something happened. The children of Israel turned and they looked at the sea and then they turned and they looked at the other sea of mankind behind the Pharaoh and his army. And they said, Ya Musa, Udina min qabla ta'atina. Oin ba'di ma jiddana. Ya Musa, you have been hurt before he came to us and after he came to us and here we are. Inna la mudrakun. Here we are. We are busted. They're going to kill us. Musa alayhi salam says, Kalla. No way. I have Allah with me and he will guide me. Can you have that faith, my brothers and my sisters? Ashura is coming here every year to tell you. 
Can you have the same faith, uh, Iman, as Musa a.s. had? When you have a world of problems behind your back, when everything is shut in front of you, when you think you are doomed and perished, when you think everything in front of you is as dark, as dangerous, and as deep as the ocean or the sea that faced the children of Israel, when your problems look exactly as ferocious, as destroying, as Pharaoh is with his army. Do you have the nuts to say, Allah is with me and he will make me successful? Or will you break down and cry and start looking for your solutions right and left? Musa didn't look for solutions, look at right. He first said, Allah is with me. At that moment, Allah said to him, Ya Musa, you have stuff in your hand. That stuff, my brothers and my sisters, do you know what it stands for? It stands for the tools that Allah has given us to produce and be better people. Allah could have opened the sea right by himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he said to Musa, hate this sea with that stuff. What is your stuff, my brothers and my sisters, when the problems are tough on you? You have a stuff in your hand. You just don't see it, but you can use it. But you don't know how to use it because you never actually learned how to trust the giver of the trust, Allah. Work on yourself to develop that trust and the stuff will be in your hand anytime you want it. Wallahi al-Azim, anytime you want it. I've seen the miracles of that. Musa alayhi salam hits the sea. The sea opens in two, one side and one side. The children of Israel, even though the safety road is open right in front of them, instead of walking, they said, yeah, Musa, we ain't gonna walk through that. We are 12 different tribes. We want each tribe to have its own pathway. And Musa alayhi salam looked at them and he said, SubhanAllah, what kind of ungrateful people what kind of ungrates Allah opens the sea for you and you now want more but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever miraculously accommodating Allah opened 12 pathways 12 highways in the sea each tribe knew which path tribe of this go number one two three four the children of Israel between two paths there was a big block of water. They could see through it. You can put your finger in the water and it gets wet, but the water wouldn't run on them. Allah dried the land so that they can walk through it without no problem. La ilaha illallah. When they wanted to dig the channel between England and France with all the infrastructure and progress and wealth and all, all, all it took them years, years of planning and, 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 and. It was a matter of minutes for Allah to open 12 routes for the children of Israel to cross. Pharaoh saw that. Why didn't he learn his lesson? Why didn't he see the power of God? Because Allah has written his doom. And when Allah writes your doom, there is not much you can do. Whatever you try won't work. When the last of the children of Israel was in the middle of the sea, Pharaoh engaged. Pharaoh and Allah did that so that Pharaoh won't stop because if he sees everyone is on the other verge, he's not going to engage. But when he saw the last man or the last group of people was still in the middle, he said, We can catch them. And subhanAllah, when Pharaoh reached the halfway through, that last man were on the verge. When all the army of Pharaoh was in the water, or in the sea, or in the dry land, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala commanded Musa alayhi salam one more time, hit the sea. And Musa alayhi salam hits the sea, bismillah. And the sea closes back to how it were before. At that time there, Pharaoh saw death. And at that time there, he wanted to embrace Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't even teach him, let him know how to say, La ilaha illallah, Musa is Rasulullah. He said, I believe in that, in the one that the children of Israel believe in. <laughs> Allah told him, is it now? Is it now? And that before you have declined. The children of Israel, after they saw the miracle and how Allah saved them, they were walking and the first thing they did, they saw a group of people worshipping an idol. And they said, yeah, Musa, give us a deity just like they have a deity. Musa got very, very angry with them. And he said, Allah just saved you a few words. And now you're asking me for that? And, and, and you know the miracles of what Allah has given the children of Israel and what they did and what they did. Ashura, my dear brothers and my sisters, is not about a day going hungry and expect a year's sins to go away. Ashura is more than that. Ashura reminds us of the children of Israel 
who, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, Qulu hitta naghfir lakum. Say hitta, like say astaghfirullah, say atubu ila Allah. Allah will forgive you. They say hanta, they changed that. The Muslims today, they change the world of Allah, they don't obey Allah as he wants us. The Yahud, they say, qalu sami'na wa asayna. We have heard the command of Allah and we disobey, we don't follow that. They didn't say it with the mouth, they said with the actions. Muslims today, we do the same thing. We hear the command of Allah and we willfully choose not to obey Allah. The children of Israel, what they did, they thought, qalu nahnu abna'ullahi wa ahibba'uh. They said, we are the kids of Allah and the most beloved to him. We are the preferred people of Allah. What are we saying Muslims today? Just because I am a Muslim, I say, la ilaha illallah, then I expect Allah to treat me different. I must have big deal, but I expect Allah, he's going to favor me. Wrong, wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent al-man wa salwa roasted meat every day when they were left in the desert. A salwa very beautiful, sweet plant. Nothing again. The children of Israel were arrogant. Despite all the miracles that Allah has done for them, still arrogant. Ashura was the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala triumphantly brought a tawheed as the winner. Allah knew the children of Israel were angry. Allah knew the children of Israel would commit shirk. Allah knew the children of Israel would abuse his love. Allah knew the children of Israel were not fit to be the best people on earth. Yet, 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 yet. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala saved them. Allah teaches us oppression doesn't have a place in the realm of God. The message of Ashura to me and to you, my brothers and my sisters, is this. It's either we side with Allah and be proactive people, be part of this global world, help people discover Allah through our actions, enough of the empty words or pay the price as the children of Israel paid the price before. Ashura comes everywhere to remind us of our faith one day in the future. I swear to Allah, one day Muslims will be slaughtered just like the children of Israel were in Egypt. I swear to Allah, this is our future. If we don't work for it today, we're gonna pay the consequences and the negative results later on. 30 years ago when I was here in England, there was not even a single, a lot of people were not here. The Muslims youth were not as today in the street. I see people say, Salaam Alaikum, I'm thinking like I'm in a Muslim country. Muslims, you have missed the boat of giving the best of us. We stole in benefit, just like the children of Israel, we stole from the children of Egypt. Today, people here, SubhanAllah, I remember back in time, Every people that came from North Africa or Asia or East Africa, what was their worry? To get as many houses as they can. They used to lie to the government. They're still married and they played like, okay, we are separated and the government give benefit to this and benefit to that and a house to this and a house of that. Subhanallah. What have they accomplished with that stolen wealth? Just like the children of Israel. That stolen wealth caused them their faith. Allah punished them with a cow, with a calf. They worshipped that. And we Muslims today, a lot of Muslims today, they stole enough money from the government and they bought houses in their homelands. I know people that went to the bank, borrowed 50, 60,000, and then they took off and ran away home and they built houses at home. And then these houses become like the cows in their hearts. This is why the first surah in the Quran after Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, and Al-Baqarah is everyone has a cow in their heart. If you want to get closer to Allah, slaughter the cow in your heart. And if you want to stay away from Allah, stay away. Ashura comes to remind us all this. Ashura is a red signal about our faith one day. This is why Rasulullah says, Musa salam, we are more entitled to Musa salam, and to Ashura and to be thankful to Allah and to be appreciative to Allah for something he did for the children of Israel, or for Musa salam, or for the Tawheed. It was more for Musa and the Tawheed. And the children of Israel looked at it from their own safety. So you, my brothers and my sisters today, what does Ashura teach you? What does Ashura bring between your eyes? 
Do you think just going hungry for a day or two gets you a year of your minor sins forbidden? That is all that is about Ashwara. When I am in East London, in Bangladesh City, in East Aldgate East, in Whitechapel, or I go to a little bit Upton Park, or I go to Pakistan, or I go, if I want to go to Afghanistan, or if I go to, subhanAllah, we live in England, and it's unbelievable how much the culture is still here. I see people dressed up as Muslims in the street, and they don't even know how to recite Al-Fatiha properly, and I see them wearing the this and that, and they have this beard and that thing, and they, and I see them at night, and it's, it's very, very disturbing. One day, my brothers and my sisters, if Ashura does not revive the coming back to Allah, and how triumphantly we will be like Musa a.s., then we deserve the knife like the rest of the children of Israel. Choice is yours. What do you do with it? I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blesses us and makes us wake up and do our duty and be the good Muslims that we are. If we don't do that, the knife is being sharpened. How about presenting our throats? It's easy job. Don't let Ashwara go about not eating a day and expect a whole year to go resolved and expiated and forbidden and forgiven and all that kind of stuff. It's not about that. Ashwara is about a threat. It's about a threat that is looming and awaiting us. What are we going to do with it? And I pray to Allah wa ta'ala, that just like the Tawheed of Musa salam safeguarded the children of Israel, the Tawheed will safeguard us one day if we stick to the religion of Allah. If we don't stick to the religion of Allah, all of us will pay a heavy price someday. When that someday is going to come, Allah knows best. But Ashura comes every day to remind us of that day. So please always remember, you are entitled to Musa and what Allah gave him on the day of Ashura and what Allah gave Nuh on the day of Ashura because we are people of the Tawheed. Let's make a good usage of Ashura. Support this group of Dawah, my brothers and my sisters. Support anything. If you can write my talks so that we can put them on the website, do. If you have any graphic design and you can help me design posters and things like that, do. If you know someone or you are somebody who can work on the web design and you can help me because it's too much work for me, do. If you have money and you want to donate and you help me to recruit the services of other people to help, do. But don't you sit home with crossed legs, crossed arms and enjoying an iPhone 7. And Ashura is coming here to remind you of a looming danger and you are just sit there and you don't do nothing about it. And then one day when it hits us, we say, Ya Allah, where did that come from? What are the human rights? And what is the United States? And what is the United Potatoes and Tomatoes? There be nowhere. And we have seen when Muslims are concerned, mankind's laws can easily be turned. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to safeguard me and you, our children, the most beloved, and make us agents of good, agents of right. And let us use the tools of this life to the purpose of the one to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is your brother, Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa. And I pray to Allah that Ashwara will mean something different to you. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and to make us more entitled to Musa alayhi salam than his own people. If you want to be in my group, please send me a text on 078-76-408735. Your suggestions, recommendations, questions, anything are very much welcomed. I love you all and you have a wonderful Ashura. And please don't forget us in your dua. وصل اللهم على نبينا محمد سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته